Hello YouTubers and fellow hams. Well, I had an email from one of my viewers over in Wales. Hi Stephen. And he was asking questions about upgrading WSJTX under Linux to play with FT8. And I thought, well, pretty simple thing to do, but uh, maybe I'd just do a video on it, show you guys how to do it. So uh, let's go over to the computer and I'll walk you through how to upgrade WSJTX to the latest uh, release candidate, 1.8 which will include FT8. Okay, I'm running Ubuntu Mate. Um, this will work, these instructions will work for any Debian-based Linux installation, which is most of them, most of the popular ones. Ubuntu, Ubuntu Mate, Linux Mint, Debian. Uh, most of the popular Linux distributions are gonna be based on Debian. If you're running Arch Linux or Fedora, or something that's not based on Debian, you these won't work. You'll have to build WSJTX from source, which is a whole other video and it's pretty complicated. But for most of you, this is going to work. So the first thing we're going to need to do is install a couple of uh, programs. Uh, we're going to open the terminal. In most uh, modern Linuxes, you can just do a Control Alt T to open a terminal. Uh, you might have a menu system, and under System Tools, you'll find Terminal. Um, Ubuntu, you could just hit the Windows key on your keyboard and type in terminal to get to the terminal. And once we've got the terminal opened, uh, we need to check something. We need to know what version of Linux we're running. We need to know if we're 32-bit or 64-bit. That will be important later. So to find that out, you're going to type file space slash sbin slash init. Now this is going to work for about half of you. Um, init is a program that brings your whole system up. When you boot your computer, the first thing that gets run after the kernel is init, and it brings up everything else. It initializes the system. Uh, later versions of Linux, they have switched over to something else called systemd. I think I'm running systemd, but for about half of you, it's going to be init. So we're going to start there. If you don't have init, you'll see this. See, I don't have a NIT. If you do have a NIT, it will give you some information. Uh, in my case, I don't have a NIT, and it's telling me that that is actually linked to this, lib systemd systemd. So I want to rerun the command file slash lib slash systemd slash systemd. There we go. File is a program that tells us about the whatever file we specify. And in this case, it's telling me that this is an ELF binary, which is an executable program, and that it is 64-bit. That's what I needed to see. If yours says 32-bit, make a note. So now we know what version of Linux we've got. I'm running a 64-bit version. This will be important later. Okay, now we need to install something that we will use to install the rest of the software. We're gonna install a program called Synaptic. We do that with sudo, which means super user do. That means run the following command as root, which is like the God account on the computer. It's like administrator under Windows. Uh, apt get, which is going to go out to the package servers for Canonical or Ubuntu or Debian and get a piece of software. Install synaptic, S-Y-N-A-P-T-I-C. It'll ask you for your password. And it will go and install the program called Synaptic. Now the reason I did that was I wanted to show you Synaptic. There are these massive package servers at your Linux distribution's headquarters. Canonical, Debian, Linux Mint, they all have their own servers. And on those servers they have a bunch of software that's been pre-built for Linux that you can simply download and run. They're in package format. A package is all the software and, and uh, dependency information needed for a program packaged into one file. And then you can simply install that file. So we've installed Synaptic, which we're going to use to go and fetch other packages. I'm going to exit my terminal. Now we need to run Synaptic. If you have a menu system, you'll find it under System and Administration, probably, Synaptic Package Manager. If you're running um, 
Ubuntu with Unity, hit your Windows key and start to type Synaptic and it will find it for you. Synaptic's going to ask for your password because it needs to install things. Um, it needs to be root uh, access. So I'll put my password in. And that brings up Synaptic Package Manager. This is nice because you can search software that's available by categories, by keyword. Um, you get a description of the software out here. So it's, it's a really nice front end to the packaging system. So I'm going to search for something, and this is the second piece of software that we need to install before we can update WSJTX. G-D-E-B-I. g -E And here it is, g -Deb -E. I'm going to check this box and mark for installation. This is where Synaptic's nice. It's going to find all of the dependencies for that and give you the option to install them as well. So I can just hit mark. If I, I don't have to go out and look for all of these individually or find out what they are. Synaptic's handling it for me. So GW's checked and installed. I'm going to go ahead and install WSJTX even though it's a really old version because I want to show you. There. All right. We've checked the packages we want. We hit apply. It'll double check with us. 10 new packages, well, 34 new packages will be installed. Apply. The reason I'm installing the old WJTX is I wanted to show you that, that Synaptic will give you access to a lot of ham radio software, but it might not be up to date. These package servers will have versions of the programs, of third party programs, that were available at the time that that version of Linux was released. I'm running 16.04, which is older. I have not upgraded to 17 yet because I give them a year to get all the bugs ironed out before I update. You know, I'm relying on this machine to, to work for editing my videos. So it's stable, everything works. I'm not gonna bother with updating it until they've had some time to get the new version stable. Anyway, um, the version of WSJTX, which was available at the time, is 1.1. Well, it's there now if I go to ham radio, WSJTX. But as you can see, very old version. In fact, it only has JT9, JT65. That's all it's got. We need the new version of WSJTX. So we will go to the web to the uh, site for WSJTX, and that's the one at physics.princeton.edu, Pulsar, K1JT, WSJTX.html. And if we scroll down on his page, here's where we can download the software. Now, the, the latest full release or stable version is 1.7 but we don't want 1.7. It does not have um, FT8. If we scroll down a little further, here is 1.8, release candidate three. He's not quite done with it, that's why it says release candidate, but it's stable, it does work. Now remember earlier when I said we needed to find out if we have a 32 or 64-bit Linux? This is why. You can see that there are two Debian Ubuntu files here, 1.8 RC3, AMD64, and I386. I386 is if you're running 32-bit Linux, AMD64 is if you're running 64-bit Linux. And you see this extension, .deb, that's a Debian package. So that's, that's why we installed GDB <coughs> earlier. You'll see why in a moment. So I'm going to download that. It'll only take a second because it's only 9.5 meg. It's done. Now, if we go to your download folder, you should see this Debian package that you just downloaded. This is where GDB comes in. It's a program for installing packages locally. Synaptic goes out to their servers and pulls down packages. Problem, older versions of third-party software. So we've downloaded the newer version locally. Now we need to install it locally. That's what GDB does, which we already installed. So if I right click on this, you'll see that my default is open with GDB package installer. 
it's going to remind us that there's an older version available in the software channel. Ignore that. All dependencies are satisfied. This is important to see. If that says that, then you're ready to install. We just click install. It'll ask for your password again. And it'll do the installation. And once it's done, you'll see this change to reinstall or remove. All right. So now we should have WSJTX version 1.8 and it has FT8. So it's just that easy. We've just upgraded to the latest version. Hopefully these instructions work well for you. Um, as long as you're running a Debian based Linux, that all should go smoothly and you'll be all ready to go play with FT8. So have fun. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Also, if you're not already a subscriber, click to subscribe. Join us on the Facebook channel for discussion about the videos. And if you'd like to help support this channel, please click to support me on my Patreon page.